Instead of the children moment, this would be our moment to listen to the, to the story and to, uh, and to listen to the sermon that uh, Reverend George uh, prepared for us. The scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and the Word of God says, That same day Jesus left the house and sat by the Sea of Galilee. Large crowds gathered around him, so he got into a boat. He sat down in it. All people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things by using stories. He said, a farmer went out to plant his seed. He spread the seed on the ground. Some fell on a road. Birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky places where there wasn't much soil. The plants came up quickly because the soil wasn't deep. When the sun came up, it burned the plants. They dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and blocked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It produced a crop 160 or 30 times more than what was planted. Whoever has ears should listen. May God bless the reading of his word, and now let's listen to the sermon. Ellie, thank you. Uh, Ellie is always so gracious well, to all of us, but I appreciate your welcome and your help, assistance. Um, David uh, uh, allowed me to baptize my grandson on uh, Palm Sunday here, and I appreciate it. Uh, being able to be a part of the service. Uh, I was a minister in, in Shreveport uh, in Christian churches, uh, 83 to 96, and so, you know, this is kind of home territory. You know uh, a, lot of, a lot of people here, and I always appreciate being in the sanctuary. And also did contemporary worship for a lot of years, and uh, I kind of found there was always a joy in the preparation for that, and the and the setting up and the tearing down. I don't know, you know, it seems like, you know, it's a lot of busy work, but there was something that was kind of neat about, about getting ready and then, you know, taking care of things afterwards. <coughs> um, have any of you ever heard the story that Kelly read? Oh, <laughs> a few of you have. Yeah, you know, it's so familiar, and uh, of course, there's a danger to things like that because. You, you, you know, you know, you know the story. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't maybe mean that much. Um, but you know, uh, these are pair, one of the parables that Jesus told, and uh, that's pretty significant because we can hear them a lot of times, and hopefully, every time there's something new. Um, Kings Highway used to do a program called Godly Play for a lot of years, and some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, it's a Montessori-based uh, program of education, and the key to uh, that Godly Play program is found in the, their six parables that are used a lot. And uh, <clears throat> they're brought out each year, and kids sometimes will say, well, I've, I've heard this one before. And uh, one of the things you might say to Child, well, have you ever had a birthday party? Yeah, well, would you think it'd be good to have another one? You know, yeah, okay. So, uh, we try to say every time we open up the parable, you're different. And so you hear it in a different way each time. I have a, I have a business card. And, uh, <coughs> I found that these are almost useless anymore because just let me have the number and I'll put it in my phone, you know, but uh, anyway, but sometimes people want a business card and, and all that. So uh, mine says, George Latimer, retired person, advice, adages, and aphorisms. Those are like wise sayings, you know. I had to look it up. And then it says, small home repairs when I feel like it. 
which I'm still doing that occasionally, yes. Um, and then contact information. <clears throat> uh, this is my wife, Kathy, over here, and uh, she's uh, away. Uh, after getting to go to the Paul McCarthy uh, concert last night. Yeah. Um, and we kind of have a standing joke because I, I want to keep my phone with me. And I say, well, somebody may call and want some advice. Well, you know, nobody ever calls because, you know, no, nobody wants advice. And every generation has the problem of how do we pass on what we have learned, what has been passed on to us, to the next generation. You know, how do we, how do, we do that? Because a lot of us have had some bad experiences that we, we would rather that our children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, other children in life, would not have to repeat our mistakes, right? So, you know, there's some wisdom. We have been given things from our parents, grandparents, society, important adults in our life, that made a difference to us. We'd like to be able to pass it on. How do we do that? Advice? Mm, maybe. How about stories? How many of you remember the little engine that could? Okay, yeah. Good story. You know, I think I can. I, you know, and that's in the children's book and encourage, you know, keep trying, keep trying. Um, did you have to read To Kill a Mockingbird like in junior high? Or, yeah. I mean, we think that's an important work of fiction. Uh, that uh, has an application to life. Uh, what about, have you heard the poem Footsteps in the Sand? Okay, that, you know, that when you thought you couldn't go any farther, somebody carried you. Anyway, so these are kind of things that are part of our, our collective wisdom. And how did Jesus pass along what he was teaching? You know, he was pretty radical. And still is. You know, he talks about justice for the poor, taking care of the least of these in society as a priority, still pretty radical. Diminished wealth, you know, these riches are things that get you in trouble, not, not bringing blessings. Um, and so he had these radical ideas, and he had people who were kind of interested, and some were pretty avid listeners of Jesus, but others were just kind of there. And one of the ways that he found useful to teach people was to tell these parables. Uh, you may think of others. Uh, I think one of the favorites is the parable of the prodigal son, you know, the kid that takes half the money of the family and runs off and wastes it and, and you know, comes kind of crawling back. And, but it's really the parable of the forgiving father who welcomes the son home after all of that. You know, because all of us hope if we ever, you know, wander away that we'll be welcomed again. Or uh, the parable of the lost sheep, you know, the, the shepherd that leaves the main flock and goes after the one that is lost because the one is important. Uh, you know, these are stories that, that we remember. And so, when we, we shared this parable again today, and you know, you heard those words, and maybe they made a difference, and maybe not, but I just kind of want to re, retell it in a way. Um, what if it was the parable of uh, the careless sower? You know, uh, people in Jesus' time uh, knew all about farming, much more than we did it because they were, they were close to the land. Uh, and they hear a story about somebody wasting seed, throwing it in the path and the weeds and all that. They would think that was ridiculous. Uh, that, that would make a point. They would remember that. Why would a, why would a sower do that? Uh, is the point that we need to be giving with ourselves? You know, kind of extravagant and who we care for? what we do with what we have. Um, maybe it's the parable of the miraculous harvest, you know, that something grows. I mean, some of you are gardeners, you know, and 
know, it's kind of amazing what can happen when, when the soil's right and the, you know, the rain's right and the sun's right. And, you know, you just have a miraculous harvest. Um, the possibilities that we might take from that are, you know, how God can make something out of us when we didn't think that anything could happen. That possibility. Um, how about the parable of the helpless seeds? Because the seeds have no control where they end up. Some end up on the path, some in the weeds, some in good ground. Um, maybe that would remind us that a lot of people are where they are not because of their own choice. It's where they were planted. And, and some families are nurturing and some aren't. And things happen to kids that shouldn't and affects their life. And maybe we should take away from that to be a little more understanding of people that might not be the same as we are. Or maybe it's the parable of the soils. You know, there's, there's these possibilities of good soil. But even in the good soil, there was 30 and 60 and 100. What was the difference? Just, you know, some people prosper more than others. Uh, we can take away from that, you know, maybe there's like four types of soil in our hearts. Hard, weedy, rocky, good. Or how about the parable of the uh, secret sower? Because Jesus put these words out and some people obviously got it and somebody wrote it down. But there were plenty of people who didn't get it and who, you know, turned away and said, you know, there's nothing new here or, you know, this guy's too radical or whatever. Uh, so it's kind of like the secret. And Jesus talks about, you know, the Pharisees, the, the really religious folks, they were the ones that had the hardest time with his teaching because they didn't kind of get past what they knew to hear what he was saying. Um, but, you know, it's a parable. And there's, there's no one conclusion to it. And there's no right answer. It's what you hear. What's kind of right for you. And, and I don't have any advice to tell you what should be right for you. You've got to decide that for yourself. Um, there's kind of a division in groups of Christians about what we should do with the message. Um, some are very concerned about what I do as an individual. You know, um, concerned about their salvation. They're concerned about their ethical decisions. They're concerned about how they deal with other people. This is primary. You know, how do I be a good follower of Jesus? I do these things. I don't do these things. Others, their primary concern, not that that's not important, their primary concern is what do we do as a group of Christians to reach out into our community? You know, how do we get other folks to message? How do we work with the poor and the weak and the elderly and the downtrodden? How do we organize to do that? And that kind of becomes their focus. And sometimes there's a little push and shove between what one group wants to do what another group. But you know, how you hear these words and how you respond is you. And you don't necessarily choose which side you're on of those things. It's who you are. I want to uh, try a couple other parables. Um, the parable of the teacher. And uh, some students were not interested in learning anything new, and they remained ignorant. And, and some tried to learn, but they were so distracted by their iPhones that nothing really stuck. And, and some like learning, but the problems of generational poverty in some and the problems of too much wealth in others led them to self-destructive habits, and they forgot the lessons. But some were open, 
and they gained skills and they were successful in their careers and they contributed to their community and they loved knowledge and some even became teachers themselves. Or how about the parable of the evangelist? Who began to preach and some heard but they would not believe. And they remained as they were. And others heard and they formed churches. But they were mostly churches of convenience and they were more interested in bake sales than Bible study. And they had no depth and that the first controversy they folded. Now others created successful congregations but the world and the neighborhood changed. And what they had always done didn't work anymore. And so they withered. And some organized for depth. And they were fearless in mission. And they were generous in spirit. And there was joy and life there. A sower went out to sow. To me, this is a parable about God, about the magnificent spreading of the seeds of love and acceptance and care everywhere. Kathy and I are fortunate enough to live on, on a lake in Oklahoma, and um, I was out fishing a few weeks ago, and we're kind of at the end of this cove, and at the end of the cove, there are these scruffy-looking willow trees. And the sun was setting, and there was a, a color of the sky and of the water and of those trees that I have never seen before. It was kind of a mahogany color with a, with a kind of several colors of green of the willow leaves and all that. And it was just incredible to see the beauty of these scruffy looking trees that evening. And, you know, it was there for just a few minutes and then, you know, the sun's setting and things change and all that. I've seen those trees a thousand times, but I've never seen them just like that. Maybe you've heard this parable a dozen times or a hundred times. But this is the first time you've heard it today. A parable about how God keeps spreading this, this love and, and openness and inclusiveness to everyone. Sometimes we're hard-hearted and stiff-necked and traditional. today heard a story about the sower. And before this day is over, each of us have an opportunity to respond to your love in our lives. Something will happen 